Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're not going to be embarking on a mammoth construction project split over three parts. We're simply going to be looking at a technique which I think it's very useful for you to know and has lots of different possibilities. So let's get started. I'm going to first of all select the text tool, that's T, and I'm going to type the word edge. I'm going to come over to the inspector, I'm going to come to format, I'm going to center align it, I'm going to come over to the properties, and I'm going to hit this extremely useful reset button. Why am I talking about this reset button? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because Apple, in their extreme wisdom, have decided to remove it from the latest version of Motion. Instead, you now have to right click reset parameter. And to my mind, that is a regressive step. OK, select the text object. Let's increase the size. And let's bring down the baseline so it's more or less centered up. OK, jolly good. Come over to the library generators and we'll look for color solid and bring it in at the bottom here. And let's come over to the inspector, click on the color swatch and let's make this a particularly vile pink like that. I'm just going to call this group BG for background and this one here text for text. I'm going to select the background group. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select make clone layer. This makes a new group with the clone in it and I'm going to drag that new group up to the top here above my text. Then I'm going to select the clone layer and right click add image mask. So then I want to add the text group to that image mask source well. And we'll leave that group turned off. Then I'm going to come here and select invert mask. And I'm going to select the image mask and right click duplicate. And then I'll come to the mask blend mode and I'm going to select subtract. Next I'm just going to turn off the background so you can get a better idea of what is actually happening. Okay. Nothing very interesting just yet, except we've got this faint outline. So I'm going to come over to the library, come to filters, come to blur, and I'm going to grab Gaussian blur, and I'm going to add it to that lower image mask there. And I'm going to come to the inspector. So now if we grab the amount and increase that value, you'll see we've got this really nice effect where that color is bleeding around the edges of the text. And this is very different, incidentally, from the, a blurred outline because we've got a blurred inside edge and a nice crisp outside edge. And that's a particularly cool looking effect, I think, in itself. OK, but we can go one step further. Let's call this group here inner because that's what it is, our inner edge. And let's right click duplicate and let's call this one outer. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take that Gaussian blur here and I'm going to drag it onto the uppermost image mask and let's see what happens there. And you'll see now we have a blurred version going outside. Let's turn off our inner and you'll see what actually happens. So we've got this rather nice backlit effect there. And that's pretty cool, I think. But what I actually want to do is something slightly different. I want to turn back on my inner and I'm going to come down to the Gaussian Blur and slightly reduce that amount. I just want a little bit of bleed and increase the Gaussian Blur on the background. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to come back down to the text and turn it on. Turn on that group, I should say. Come over to Appearance. I'm going to set a face color of black like so. Turn on the outline, click on the color swatch and set that to white. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. And you can see why I've done that. It's just given us a nice little definition to this. And then we have this pretty cool neon effect. Uh, we could increase the intensity of that by selecting this outer group, right click, duplicate. And we could come over to properties and set the blend mode of this group to add. And you can see that that's just adding a little bit more punch to that glow. And we could probably come to here and select that Gaussian blur, increase that blur amount even more. You get the overall idea. And now what we can do is we can come down to our color solid. 
we can click on the opacity. We can right click, add parameter behavior, randomize. And then we'll set the amount to, I don't know, about 40 or something. Set the apply mode to subtract and then press play. And maybe just crank up the noisiness a bit. You get the overall idea. We've created this pretty cool neon effect. Okay, you'll say that's a heck of a lot of work and uh, I don't want to be doing that every time I want this neon effect. So what we can actually do is we can save our work. I'm just going to remove that outer because that's unnecessarily complicating what I want to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and right click group. And I'm going to call this group edge effects. Then I'm going to come to the library. I'm going to scroll down until I get to favorites and I'm going to drag that edge effects group into the favorites there. Now I'm just going to delete everything that's in this project and let's assume we've got a new project we've just started and we want to set that all up again. All we need to do is come over to our favorites, grab that edge effects and drag it in and we're back. And so obviously we can adjust any of these parameters as required. So we could come over to the text and we could type neon instead. And obviously we can adjust any of these other features. Okay, this is a great technique to know about using the favorites to save off fairly complex effects like this. But there is one bug that has been there forever and that Apple will probably never fix. And that is this. I'm going to go to my last frame and where's my where's my effect? It's gone. Well, if I step back one frame, it's there. But the bug means that any effect you save off to the library is shortened by one frame. No idea why. It's just one of those crazy Apple timing things. Note also that we've saved it off as five seconds long. And if, for example, we made our project 10 seconds long, let's delete that again, come over to the library, Again, let's drag in edge effects and let's see what happens. That is now only five seconds long in our project. It doesn't automatically set itself to the length of the project. So just a couple of uh, things you need to be aware of there. Just wanted to warn you about those. OK, so we're back with our original effect. I'm going to open it all up and to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and click on its disclosure triangle. And you'll notice that opens up everything including the enclosing groups. It's a pretty handy trick to know. I'm going to take off that randomize from the color. just wanted to show you that we can do some pretty interesting things just by adding elements to this background group. And to do that, I'm going to come over to the library. I'm going to select lens flare and I'm just going to bring it into that group and you'll see what happens. There we go. There's our lens flare in the middle there and that's already looking pretty cool in itself. I can move the lens flare center to where I want it to be, increase the intensity. Uh, there's, there's no end of uh, tricks you can play just by adding stuff in to this group. We could right click that duplicate and we could put that duplicate um, sort of in a different place and reduce the intensity. You get the idea. You can make this look much more natural and organic by adding different elements into that. OK, let's remove those for now and move on to showing you something else. I'm going to turn off this outer group here uh, and I want to show you a, a really simple look that I, I very much like using myself. Uh, let's come over to Edge, Appearance. I'm going to turn off Outline. I'm going to make this colour a sort of faded grey like that. And I'm going to come down to the colour solid and I've had enough of this nasty pink. I'm just going to set that to black. So already I quite like the look of this with this slightly faded edges, but we can do a lot more with it. So I'm going to come over to the library, filters, color correction, levels, and I'm going to add that just above that Gaussian blur there. And I'm going to come to the inspector and I'm going to select alpha instead of RGB. And I'm going to drag the black value up. And you can see that as I do so, I'm rounding out the corners of the shape there. What I need to do, however, is just to turn off that 
second mask and you'll see a bit better what I'm trying to achieve which is this eroded look and it's a really nice sort of rounded edge look and I can control that using this black value here on the levels. There's still a little bit of sharpness to these corners here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Gaussian blur there and hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it onto my text group there and then you can see that I've now got this really lovely spooky horror -y kind of effect on that you know I can really just eat it away using that in combination with the other one here you know I've really got loads of control over how that's eaten away and this is an effect I really like you know you can use it in an exaggerated way or you can use it in subtle ways now the only problem with this is if I switch to the alpha channel you'll see it's not working the way we need it to work and that's because we're not controlling the edge anymore with this secondary image mask so there's a way around this switch back to color and that's to come up to the top here this main edge effects group come to the library filters color correction and I'm going to look for the channel mixer and this is a way to set the luminance of the image to be the alpha so let's come over to the inspector we want to kill the actual alpha channel so set that to zero and what we want to do is we want to use the red green and blue luminance as the alpha so I'm going to set each of these to one and you'll see now if I switch over to alpha so shift a for the alpha channel I've got an alpha channel from the luminance so that's the way to sort that particular problem out so this is kind of nice but I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn off the Gaussian blur on the text and we're going to go for a different look again I'm also going to turn back on this secondary image mask here what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a texture to my background group and if we look at that texture it's this concrete you can use anything kind of rough and rugged like this just pick something you like okay so that's already looking quite nice as it is but um, I want to do something a bit more interesting than that so I'm going to grab the levels and the Gaussian blur from the layer image mask and holding down the alt or option key I'm going to add them to the top mask so that's copying them over and I'm just going to reduce that levels there on this top one and you can see we're getting this rather nice effect of this sort of texture that's bleeding over the edges of the text so hopefully you're getting the idea that this is a very useful technique and one of the cool things about it is that we're not restricted to using it with text alone so what I'm going to do to show you that is I'm going to bring in a logo and I'm going to bring it into this text group here like that and I'm going to turn off the text itself and you can see that that's now applying to this logo directly and that's because this logo has got an alpha channel but as you saw with our channel mixer technique if it doesn't have an alpha channel you could simply use that channel mixer to generate one or there's any, any number of different ways you could achieve that so finally I just want to say a word about color the text group here which has got our logo in it currently but also has the text in it is simply providing us with alpha information and it's not actually providing us with any color information so we can't use this to colorize our result and we could colorize this background group but that would only colorize the spill around the edges so what I'm going to do is come up to my top group here the edge effects group come to filters color correction I'm going to throw on a, a tint first of all and, and then also a levels just above that come to the inspector I'm going to grab the tint color and let's come over here somewhere and then what I want to do is I want to come to the red channel for the levels and bring up the level there so this is actually reducing the red component in the image do the same for the green reduce the green component and you can see how that's given us quite a nice colorizing of the entire result and I can fine-tune the result with the RGB to crunch it all down a bit 
So now I want you to have a look at the dramatic difference it makes if I come down to the uh, second mask on the uh, inner and I turn off these two effects and you can see that's a really quite a serious difference and again it's a very very different look. One other really quick trick I want to show you is just turning off this mask and then we're now getting this really quite interesting effect. Let me just scale this up so we're filling the screen. That kind of in itself is interesting. We're getting the effect that this is sort of stuck onto this background. Let me just turn these back on again, however, like that. And I want to show you another quick trick, probably getting a little bit silly here, but uh, let's try it nonetheless, just as a, a final fling. I'm going to come now to Stylize, and I'm going to look for Indent, and I'm going to add it just below the tint there. And I also want to just uh, get control of this color, color correction, hue saturation. I'm going to add it at the top there just to tame this color back down again, really bring that saturation right down. Again, that's really quite interesting just like that. Come over to the in indent itself. Let's turn the depth right down to one, for example. Already I like that. We could increase the, re rather reduce the highlight sharpness. We could play with the highlight brightness and do something like that. Really there's just no end to what you can do with this filter in this combination, that softness there. You see I'm really liking all of these, not really, hadn't, hadn't got a plan for what I was going to do with this, but uh, you know it's just lots and lots of really cool stuff is just coming out. So I think this is a really nice technique and you know there are just there are almost no limits to what you can do with it. I think if you approach your graphics that you're just going to throw on the Apple 3D text and make do with that, the issue with that is that your graphics are just going to look like everybody else's and they're just going to look pretty bland. And the difference with this technique is that you I can absolutely guarantee that you're going to create something that uh, is pretty unique and I think it's something we should really be aiming at with our work is just to try and put our own personal stamp on it rather than pulling a trick out of a box. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching this one and maybe catch you again another time.